In this video, we're going to take a look at the group project design document assignment. Most of these things we've already covered or will cover in this learning module, and I also have an example document that I'm going to show. So the group project design document, only one person from the group needs to turn this in, although everybody from the group should have input on it. What should it contain? First of all, an introduction. This should be like a Play Store summary, essentially. What would your application listing be on the Play Store? Then a storyboard, which is some screen mockups, some functional requirements, a class diagram, class diagram description, scrummy.com link, scrum roles, and GitHub link. So let's look at the example that I've created. First of all, My Plant Diary is the title of the app, the design document, my name, you could also put a date, uh, group members, uh, please put the group member full names up top here. That's important for me because I'll use this to create a group roster, and then I'll use that group roster to create code review assignments. So first of all, we have an introduction, and this should be an, uh, kind of like what you would see on an App Store listing for your app. Notice if we go out to an App Store like this, we can see a description, essentially what the app can do for us. So this is what I'd like to see here, and we have to think like marketing here. We want to get a lot of information across without a lot of words. So watch your sen sentence structure. Make sure you don't have run-on sentences. Be very careful about redundancy. I'll go through here and I'll mark up a few things that I think aren't adding value because every word should really be selling the user on your app, should not be wasting the user's time. Next, we have a storyboard, and I know I have a video that talks about how to do this with InVision. And so I have a screen capture from InVision. What I'd like to see here is possibly a link to InVision or whatever storyboard app you use. Uh, and either on that link or in this document or both, uh, put in the screen captures. So do some screen capture images and put those here in this document. Also a site map. If you have multiple screens, I'd like to see how the screens link together. If you have one screen, two screens, three screens, great. You're in great shape. If you're on the order of 12 screens, 15 screens, then I'm going to go through and say, uh, here are some screens that are probably not needed. Maybe we could consolidate them. A good example. In the old days, we were used to the paradigm where we would have one screen where we would enter search criteria, then we would hit a search button, then we would see a list of results, and then we would select one, and we could see details on those results. In the new days of mobile, we many times will take what used to be those three separate screens and put them on one, and it's very easy to do. We just put a search bar up at the top here. So while you're looking at a plant detail, you can always go up and search for a different plant and then see that plant detail information. So think about ways to consolidate screens. Think about the Shazam user interface where you open the app, you press anywhere, and you get, in return, the song that's playing. Something simple like that. Minimal clicks, minimal screens. I'm able to go in and get what I want very quickly. Now the functional requirements, we have a separate video that talks about these, but we want to list our requirements. And as a user, I want features so that I can blank syntax. Uh, and then maybe some dependencies and assumptions. And then we want to elaborate with given when then. Now a few hints here. Number one there should be multiple requirements, more than just one. So here we have requirement 100 search for plants. If we scroll down a bit more, we have requirement 101.0 save specimen. So multiple requirements, not just one. Number two, each of these requirements should have multiple given when then. This should cover both happy path and also edge cases. And the given when then should be very specific. So when I search for redbud, then I should receive a result with Circus canadensis eastern redbud. When I search for Quercus, then I get at least these two oaks. When I search, search for garbage, I get nothing. Okay, here's another example. Uh, when uh, given a feed of plant data is available, uh, given GPS data details are available, when I select the plant Asemina triloba, triloba, add notes planted by Brandon Jones, then when I navigate to the specimen history view, I should see at least one Asemina triloba specimen with the notes planted by Brandon Jones. So you notice the when and the then are very specific here, and they both tie right back to each other. That's how a good given when then should be written. 
avoid the temptation to be vague or ambiguous. Like when I select a plant and I add notes, then I'll see that plant with those notes. Uh, which plant and which notes? Say it in precise terms, say exactly what plant and exactly which notes, because if you have that, we can write a behavior-driven design test out of it. I speak a bit more about this in our behavior-driven design video, but you'll see that the given when then are easy to write as tests when they're worded properly, and it's easy to translate that this given when then from the document is this given when then in source code. But for that to work, it has to be very specific. So you see we have Redbud here, very specific. We have Corcus here, Alba, Alba and Rober. So uh, it helps to translate these given when then into unit test when they're very specific. Class diagram. So I have a video that shows how to do a class diagram and specifically for the platform that we're targeting with some of the components that we're targeting. So take that class diagram, plop it in here, and then put just maybe a one line description for each of the classes that are up in the diagram so we know what they're doing. Scrummy, I know we covered this one uh, in a previous video. And you can see here I've added a few more tasks since that video. So the Scrummy board on the very left under stories should have all the features that you wish to add. We'll start with our raid tasks, the risks, assumptions, issues, and dependencies, then maybe environment setup. But after those, the stories should not be technical. They should be features or functions that a user would understand. If you have on here, create the database, that's technical. User does not understand that, so that really is not a story. I'd likely make a deduction on that. But if you have something like show catalog of specimens, that's a feature that a user can use. Now, the product owner, who's also the DevOps person in our assignment, should pick just a few stories that we can work on in our first sprint, and those stories will create value. And all team members should task those out. So what we should see is maybe two or three stories with about eight to 12 tasks on them. And then the other stories don't need to be tasked out. So that's the preferred method. What I don't wanna see is maybe nine or 10 stories, each of them with one or two tasks, because then you were trying to task out all the stories, including ones that we're not gonna to get to for a while. Instead of doing that, invest more time in tasking out these stories you will cover in this sprint and give those proper details. So uh, after Scrummy, put who's going to do what role. Of course, I'm gonna be doing all roles for my project, but list the roles and who's going to be doing them. And then finally, list your GitHub link. I have a video where we go through and we look at the screens of an Android app and we see how to essentially jump into Android Studio and start a project and then push to GitHub. So you can see that push to GitHub in that video. And with that, you're in good shape. Submit this document, just one person needs to submit. The reason for this document is number one, give you a chance to sit down and decide what you wanna do. But also number two, give me an opportunity to take a look at your design and let me give you some advice or some coaching. If I see something that looks like it's going to consume a lot of your time and not let you get to your core competency, I'll bring that up when I'm grading these design documents. One example is if you're planning on writing your own login screen, that's going to waste your time. I've seen a lot of student groups where they got to the end of the semester and they got stuck on the login screen and never got to their core capabilities. So we can do login with Firebase, which is a third party login provider. So if I see a whole lot of login screen stuff, I might mark that out and say, just use a third party library like Firebase instead. So this document is really to help you get your project off to a good start, and I'm looking forward to seeing them. Thank you.